much. I invite Adrian Dvir if possible, if he is available. What, who? Uh, so thank you very much. I was like, really, it was really helpful conversation on both topics. And oh, very good. Uh, I invite you to come again. And could you please invite uh, Adrian Dvir? He was the one who wrote a book about X3 and he died about 10 years ago. So I assume he would be like available to speak. All right, let me see if I can find him. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Have a wonderful day, Max. Is, is Max right? Yes, yeah. Max. Thank I you. For him more. So, um, have a very good day. You too. Is that, you look from you look familiar. Hey, I'm Max. Is it Adrian? Yes, my name is Adrian. Oh, welcome. Thank you for coming. I just wanted to, uh, to thank you for your book. It was very influential. That's what uh, helped me a lot in my uh, medical, biomedical research and uh, in my alien research as well. Uh, I wonder how uh, how are you how are you doing on the other side, and what have you learned since the, you wrote the book? That energy is secondary now to many other energies that I am learning about. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am happy to know that you were able to find usefulness in the book. It was a a great and happy endeavor. Uh, to work with this, these energies with um, X3 and his intellect and his uh, great understanding of uh, science. I was very happy to work with him. Um, is the program still continue? Yes. The problem still continues. Program, yeah. Um, I I just uh, I'm recording. So for the for the listeners, the book the book is by Adrian Dvir. It's called uh, X3 Extraterrestrial Medicine. X3 Extraterrestrial Medicine. Um, oh, I thought I thought you said does the problem still exist? And yes, that does as well. But um, the program, yes, the program also still exists. Uh, did it was it did it change in, in any way? Because uh, in the book yeah. it is described as flourishing program where lots of healers are working together with the aliens, healing people in Israel. Yes, it still continues. It does not have the same uh, program parameters. It's, uh -huh. It works with. It's working with um, the upper echelon of the healers meaning that they have taken a few healers that are exceptional and are working on increasing their energies to almost superhuman healing power. Uh, is it surrounded by Yael? Yes, it is. Can you describe in brief the technologies that they use this, this way? How does it look? How does what look? The healing, the therapy. The therapy is about... Uh, sending energy through the body, through uh, different uh, acupressure points on the body. For mm -hmm. one, another thing is to send it to neural, uh, the neural net and to the different centers of the brain that uh, control different functions, such as the parietal lobe uh, has functions for arms and legs. 
And so you would go to that area to work with the arms and the legs as well as working with directly with the arms and the legs in the places where they are malfunctioning. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm studying the uh, DNA resonances, how we could uh, interact with DNA using the devices and how can we decipher the uh, magnetic, electromagnetic resonances of, of DNA dependent on DNA sequence. So how do we use waves to interact with specific genes? Okay. Uh, can you give any advice in, the, uh, advice in this direction? Well, all right. Like they use a chemical to in the body to, and then do a scan on the body. They, they'll put a little uh, radioactive uh, substance in the body and then scan the body to see where it went and how, the, how it is reacting in the body. You, you're aware of that kind of scans? Uh, yeah, I mean, I heard about them. Well, what will happen with, uh, what, what is the best way to do with the waves is to put slight blockages in some places in, in, the, uh, in the DNA. Uh, say you want to, uh, you want the uh, wave, you want to see where, where the waves are stopping, uh, you would uh, uh, find a way to ionize maybe some of the particles there, and then the wave will pick up on where the particles are, and this will give you ideas of how, how, the, how it is functioning, because it only ionizes those things that are doing a particular job. Yep, yep, wonderful, perfect, perfect answer. Yes, I, I agree, that's a good experimental. How about theoretical approaches? Because right now I don't have too much of experimental power. We do very few experiments at the moment. So can you suggest anything which we could theoretically try to decipher? You mean you know, look at, doing experiments, you would like to have some theo theoretical ideas? Um, I hope to discover the answer without actually doing a lot of experiments. There is a lot of experiments already published. So when we get the right model, uh, it sh the right model, it should explain the, exper the experimental data of others. So we, I hope to circumvent the need to, to do a lot of experiments. Of course. You want just information. Yep. So the, the question is, how uh, are you thinking about the DNA models? Is it part of your expertise right now? No, it is not part of what I'm doing right now um, because I have moved on from that. I have mm -hmm. learned quite a bit about that, and it is interesting, but it is not the most powerful healing energy that I have found. I found some greater healing energies, but they are used with technology. So that is the same with the, um, what we call the X3 energy. Uh, but um, these energies are more concentrated, but yet can be, of, uh, they can be used more precisely. Let's put it that way. Like, uh, with the X3 energy, we can eradicate cancer, but not, not immediately. It would, it would take a time to do that. The newer, newer energies can pinpoint and uh, highlight areas of cancer and eliminate them uh, all at once. Wow. Can you now, give a name? Can you, can you give a name to the, for the new energies? Well, it's a vibrational energy. So what it does is this. Let me tell you how it works. I don't know what, the, uh, what name they will give it on Earth. Because if I was to give a name, they're not going to use that. And they've never heard of that name. But um, it is a vibration that um, when it, it, it hits a certain vibration, they, they study the cancer find the exact vibration of that cancer. Then they find the, then they take that vibration, put it in technology, and uh, actually use some transporting uh, uh, kind of uh, energies to lock on to that 
illness and tra- mm-hmm. uh, and um, pull it out of the body all at once. So what it does is actually transport the cancer out of the body to another place. It, it, it sounds familiar. It's pretty pretty good idea. We don't. I mean, there are people who are trying to do that. Yes. Mm-hmm. But it, it, there is a way to do it. It, it will work. Uh-huh. So um, I'm thinking now about the resonances in DNA and in the body. And it becomes a quite complex picture. Uh, one of the complexities or interesting uh, understandings that came recently is that some of the energies are responsible for life energy. Basically, they feed, they feed the the uh, mm, um, the the living energy into into the body, but it, they don't control the structure and the shape. It's more like uh, how much uh, how much energized the the body is, but not the, not no control over the shape. And other energies would control the development, the shape, the form, and the um, things. And and cancer is actually. A combination, uh, anything is a combination of the two. The cancer takes a lot of energy, but also it, take, it changes the shape of the body, changes the shape of the tumor, and takes, con- takes control over the development of the, of the cells. It reprograms the cells in the new shape. So, so the same thing with the obesity, it's also the change of the shape. The same thing with uh, re- re- regeneration of the organ. So there is a morphogenic component, which is shape controlling component. So can you comment which energies are this? What, 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 any, any specifics about what's the difference between life energy and morphogenic energy? Well, morphogenic energies are there um, at the very beginning, and they, they continue to, they're like a radiation. They have mm-hmm. radioactive properties in some ways because they have a half-life and a, a whole life, but their, their half-life and whole life are just the the length of the body span. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, All right. They give out certain energies all through the life for transformative elements. And Uh so that's the formulative. It's like like a a radiation kind of energy because Mm -hmm. it, it does change form it does radiate out and it does uh, um, have a life of its own that is within the body and when it dies the body dies as well yes uh uh-huh so yes it's like the best way i can explain it is a radioactive kind of energy but how do we treat the disorders how do you treat the diseases which uh which arise from the problems in this kind of energy, in morphogenic energy. You have to, you have to um, barricade that area from the, from the energy and then work on it separately. Mm-hmm. And then once it has, has been isolated and worked on, it will, the, uh, it, like a mother bird with its child, if the child has been tampered with, it will not go back to that child. So after that area has been tampered with, the radioactive energy will no longer work with it. Uh, say, I wanted, suppose I wanted to use uh, some sort of devices uh, and irradiations to treat obesity and uh, return the body to the normal shape. Can you give any clues what, where to search for that energy? Well, there are places, let me say this, and I know that you may not agree with me, but I have learned unequivocally that there are places in the brain that can be ac- accessed, that can help change uh, the body, grow new limbs, etc. And so uh-huh. that is an area where uh, formulation can be accessed. It is DNA driven in the sense that the DNA created the brain and all of its control centers. But you see, just like humans, we need sometimes we need a control center to make things work properly. 
Uh So that's what the DNA does. It creates a a control center so that it can, um, it doesn't have to work so hard. Uh So it it creates the brain areas that can actually change uh, the format and formulation of the body. Now, there is other ways to do that. Uh Uh, The other way is to find the, uh, that part of the body's growth sequence within the DNA and activate that. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Does that make sense to you? Yes, perfect answer, yes. You, you covered it all, yep. Um, uh, we have about a couple minutes left. Do you have any uh, messages for the, for the listeners? Um, I do not know what kind of listeners that you have, but I would uh, like to... We have uh, healers. We have healers in my, in my group. We have healers and people who are interested in the aliens. Do not give up on your healing. Believe me this. As you use your healing energies, it gets stronger. And why is that? Because as healing energy moves through you, it takes out all your blockages to that energy getting to getting out of your hands, getting out of your heart, getting out of your body. So keep that energy flowing as much as possible and you become one large healing energy. You will not only send energy out of your hands and fingertips and your third eye or or your heart, but out of every pore of your body whenever you become a true enlightened healer. When I say enlightened healer, I mean, I mean that you let yourself go as far as being inhibited about how much energy is coming in and, and where that energy wants to go. Just let it uh, possess you because it is a positive thing. It's just like the Deo de Ching. Um, mm-hmm. Your inside is empty. Fill it with tail. So what that means is fill it with healing energy. Fill, fill the empty spaces with God and with the energy of God. And it does work that he encourages enlightenment and greater healing abilities consistently. Yes, uh-huh. Thank you very much. Uh, it was nice to meet you, and uh, I find it very productive to talk to you. It looks like you think in the direction of where I'm thinking, so it's easy to get to get the, the good answers. So let's talk again. It's, it's just wonderful to meet such a, a, a mind that, that can, can, can help me with my, uh, with my mission, I guess. I am and happy to be able to help. Yeah. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. I will talk to you later, and um, I invite Jim back. Very well. Have a great day. Thank you. Well, you too. Hello? Hey, Jim. Welcome back. Hi. Did you have a good session? Uh, excellent, good session, very helpful. Oh, good. I found a very nice, uh, you see it's like plants, uh, plants on the wall, a nice background for photographs. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very nice, yes. Uh, unfortunately, it's very noisy here. It's not a good uh, place for doing any broadcast. I like the palm trees though. Uh, there is no palm trees, oh yeah, there are palm trees, yep. Yep, yep, here they are. Uh-huh. Behind you, there's palm trees right there. <laughs> uh-huh. 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 So they're pretty. Yeah, I like them. Yeah, I got used to them. They're kind of weird, but, you know, I like pines much better. Oh, yes, I like pine trees. Uh-huh. So, but anyway, all right, I have an hour before my next one, so I will replenish and refurbish. Refurbish, yeah, refurbish. Um, 